What's up, everybody? This is part one of the Maison to Me project. to be releasing this with you guys. This is a project I think is not only important, but very exciting and something that will be interesting for you and me as well. Just to give you a little bit of background, I first discovered this wine via the Viticole Wine Club a few years ago and was absolutely blown away by it. So much so that I immediately sent them a DM and said, this is amazing. So of course we struck up a conversation and got to chatting and through the Instagram DMs came up with this kind of harebrained idea that I think you guys are gonna be kind of excited about. So what are we doing? For the next few months, I'm gonna be pulling a cork on this wine on the 15th of every month to check in and see how it's changed. One of the most fascinating things I learned while I was working at Press as a sommelier is how quickly a wine can change. Month to month, week to week, even day to day, sometimes the wines would have huge mood swings or shifts in textures or crazy aromatics that came out one day and didn't the next. So we wanted to see how this wine would change. How would it adapt even at a month to month level? And I think this wine is a really perfect example of a wine we can do that with. The wine itself is comprised of mostly Cabernet and a little bit of Cabernet Franc sourced from vineyards up and down Napa Valley. All of the vineyards the fruit has been sourced from came from Steve Mathiasen, who of course is renowned for organic and biodynamic farming in Napa Valley. The wines were made using minimal intervention, low use of new French oak, and harvested at a lower degrees bricks between 22 and 24 degrees. The resulting alcohol is about 13 and a half percent. And if you're curious about any of the other specs, you can find them below in the description. My first impressions of this wine were that it was bright and fresh, tension, nerve. So crazy. Really rich, really intense raspberry, lots of cherry, slightly on the underripe side. You can feel it in your mouth that it's still a very tight wine. It's a wine that maybe would have won a little bit of a decant, but you're better off just aging it for a little while longer. I'm excited today to jump back into the wine and see how it's doing and check back in again in another month to see if it's changed. So let's get into the wine. It's crazy. I think the first thing that I get with this wine when I first smell it is color more than anything. I get purples and reds more than blues or even greens. And I think this is, this is a wine that eventually is going to lend itself to more herbaceous and savory tones. But right now it's still kind of in its infancy stages, which is something that I would expect. 2014 was a vintage that was warm, not maybe as warm as 2013, but wines that presented with more of an elegance and a, and a, a refined quality more so than an opulent one. So not really surprising that that's what I'm getting on the nose, but tons of floral rose petals and violets with me. I think it's going to rest. Whoa, there's that acidity. It's funny. Michael talks about this wine as almost being more Burgundian in style. And I think I, I think I understand what he means by that. There's massive, massive acid here. And like I talked about with the nose and like I talked about a while ago is this wine has, has nerve and it has tension and it has brightness. And those are all things that I think we think of when we think of Burgundy. The palette, as far as the texture goes, it's starting to flesh out a little bit. It's still not wide. It still feels very much like this, but there is something sort of underneath of this wine that is developing into more of a fleshy side of things. It's still got massive acidity, but if I had to sum it up in a few words today, it's floral, it's tension, it's acidity and subtlety. This is a wine that feels like it's starting to round out, it's starting to develop a little bit, but right now, black cherry, violet, rose, just like a sweet sage, and this is gonna sound crazy, but I remember distinctly, I think it was the, it was like macaroni grill or some, 
They used to serve bread with olive oil and rosemary on top. And it had this like really gentle play between the sweetness of the bread and the savoriness of the rosemary. And then sort of almost that bitterness of the olive oil that came through. And that's sort of what conjures as I taste this wine. And tannins are still there. They're super fine grained. And I think as you layer them on there, they build and build and build and build. I think if you left it in decanter for a while, that would start to soften, but you would probably lose a lot by doing that. So I think at this point in time, I'll be interested to see how much more of the aromatics come out and how much more it softens by the next time I try it in about four weeks. So we'll be tasting these on the 15th of every month. Uh, I'll be doing a live video on them and then just right after be recording all of these to give you guys an idea of where this wine is at so that it has somewhere to live and we have a documentation of how this wine progresses over the next few chapters of its life. So thank you so much for watching. I'm really excited about this project. You can find this wine on Maison on Demi's site and a huge thanks to them for providing the wine to make this all possible. We love experimentation, we love projects, and this is really an exciting one for me. So thank you all for watching. I'll see you all soon.